According to the latest statistics from the CDC, 70% of Americans are overweight and 40% are obese. One in three has prediabetes and without intervention, many of those individuals will progress to full-fledged type two diabetes. This is a huge problem because poor metabolic health is associated with higher rates of cardiovascular disease, dementia and Alzheimer's, cancer, and other top causes of death, in addition to low energy, disrupted sleep, and a poor quality of life. Most weight loss metabolic health interventions focus on calories and macronutrients how much food you eat in general, and what percentage of those calories come from protein, fat, and carbohydrate. While calories and macronutrients are certainly important, they aren't the whole story. Micronutrients are also important. These vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients play essential roles in metabolism, and studies have shown that deficiencies of any of them can lead to weight gain and metabolic problems. In this video, I'll share the top three nutrients for promoting metabolic health and give you some tips for ensuring you're getting enough of them. Ready? Let's dive in. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Kresser with another Tuesday tip video for you. The first nutrient I want to cover is magnesium. Magnesium is an essential mineral when it comes to converting carbohydrates and fats into energy as it's a cofactor for many of the enzymes involved in glucose metabolism. Studies have shown a clear dose response relationship between magnesium intake and the risk of type two diabetes with each increment of 100 milligrams per day of magnesium leading to an eight to 13% reduction in the risk of type two diabetes. Magnesium is also one of the most potent natural substances for lowering blood pressure. A review of 49 clinical trials found that at appropriate doses, magnesium supplementation can reduce blood pressure in those with uncontrolled hypertension. This is important because high blood pressure is one of the most significant risk factors for cardiovascular disease, which is still the number one cause of death in the US. The vast majority of Americans aren't getting enough magnesium. The average intake of magnesium for US adults is about 340 milligrams per day for men and 260 milligrams per day for women. But a 2021 study suggested that adult men should consume 600 milligrams per day, and women should consume about 500 milligrams per day. This means that most people are falling 200 to 300 milligrams per day short of magnesium. The top food sources of magnesium are green leafy vegetables, sea vegetables like agar or spirulina, seeds like pumpkin or chia, spices like coriander and chives, cacao and chocolate, nuts like almonds and, and cashews. While it's important to eat as much magnesium rich food as possible, it's difficult to reach the optimal intake from food alone. Only about 30 to 40% of the magnesium we consume in our diet is absorbed by the body because many foods that are rich in magnesium like spinach are also high in compounds like oxalic acid, which decrease magnesium absorption. What's more, the amount of magnesium found in the food we eat has declined thanks to changes in the quality of soil over the past few decades. Between 1940 and 1991, magnesium content in vegetables in the U.S. decreased by almost 25%, in fruit by 17%, in meat by 15%, and in cheese by 26%. And in the U.K., the decline was closer to 35% over that same period. This means that for the vast majority of people, supplementation with magnesium will be required to reach the optimal targets. It's important to note that many supplements contain inferior forms of magnesium that are poorly absorbed and can lead to undesirable gastrointestinal side effects like sudden loose stools, severe gas, or an upset stomach. I'll make a specific recommendation for supplementing with magnesium along with the next two nutrients I'm going to discuss at the end of the video. The next nutrient is vitamin D. Several studies have shown an association between low vitamin D status and obesity and type 2 diabetes. For example, a 2022 study out of Canada found that people with the most severe obesity had the lowest levels of vitamin D. A Turkish study found that low vitamin D levels were associated with insulin resistance, high waist circumference, and other markers of metabolic dysfunction in adolescents and teens. And a study just published in August 2022 found that supplementation with vitamin D improved metabolic markers like hemoglobin A1c, fasting blood glucose, and HOMA IR. Sadly, data from the Linus Pauling Institute suggests that over 90% of North Americans don't get enough vitamin D, 
with high rates of deficiency in the UK, Europe, and other industrialized countries as well. There are three ways to increase your vitamin D levels. The first is sun exposure. However, this isn't a practical source of vitamin D for many people at most times of the year. For example, if you live in Boston or London and it's winter time, you will not be able to meet your vitamin D needs from sun exposure alone. The second is food. Some foods like cold water fatty fish and pasture raised meat contain vitamin D, but most people don't eat enough of these foods to meet their vitamin D needs. The third source of vitamin D is supplements. The amount of supplemental vitamin D needed to maintain a blood level of 25 D between 40 and 60 nanograms per milliliter depends on several factors, including health status, body mass index, and digestive function. Most studies suggest that 2000 IU per day is the minimum amount required. This is important because the majority of multivitamins on the market contain much less than this. People with obesity, chronic inflammation, and poor digestion may require 5,000 IU per day or even 10,000 IU per day to reach the target levels. If you do take a higher dose of 5 to 10,000 IU per day, I suggest getting your blood levels tested every six months or so. Vitamin D can be toxic at high doses, and while toxicity is rare, it's a good idea to track your levels. It's also important to note that the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K work together synergistically. Maintaining adequate levels of vitamins A and K2 has been shown to support vitamin D functions and protect against vitamin D toxicity. Magnesium and potassium also protect against vitamin D toxicity and enhance its effects. For example, magnesium is required to convert the inactive form of vitamin D into the active form. This means that even if you're supplementing with vitamin D, you could still suffer from a deficiency if you're not getting enough magnesium. The last nutrient I want to discuss is chromium. Chromium is an essential trace mineral that supports metabolic health in numerous ways. It enhances and regulates the activity of insulin and supports its effects on carbohydrate, protein, and lipid metabolism. Studies show that people with type 2 diabetes have lower blood levels of chromium than healthy controls, and a review of randomized controlled trials found that chromium supplementation improved fasting glucose, fasting insulin, hemoglobin A1c, and HOMA IR. Chromium is found in fruit, vegetables, meat, fish, and some grains. Still, given that people with metabolic issues have been shown to have lower levels of chromium, I think supplementation with about 200 micrograms per day can be helpful. If you want a simple way to supplement with each of these three nutrients, consider BioVail Multi from Adapt Naturals. It contains 150 milligrams of a highly absorbable form of magnesium, 2,000 IU of vitamin D3, and 200 micrograms of chromium, among many other nutrients that support metabolic and overall health. You can learn more at adaptnaturals.com, and I'll also put a link in the description be below the video. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right and tap the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release new content. If you know someone that might benefit from this, please share it with them by clicking the share button right under the video. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you next time.